Oh god, this is daunting. This is... Oh, oh. Welcome back guys to another edition of Looty. Today we're going to be unboxing and trying out... Coopers, a six-in-one modular robot kit by the guys over at Roboblock. Now this kit was sent to us by robocube.co.uk, which has sent us kits in the past, and basically they just sell loads of STEM robot kits with a goal of using said robots to educate kids about programming and robotics. Kind of wish these guys were around when I was a kid, because then maybe I would have programming knowledge beyond basic HTML. I might not be able to program a robot, but goddamn, can I make a sick MySpace page? So as I said, this is a six-in-one robot kit, and you can make one of the six cute little robot designs they've got up here. Yeet! You gotta love it when companies put glossy details on their boxes. So in the box we've got a poster. It kind of highlights the main reason that I wanted to try out this robot. It's because it has such a cute little face. Look at that thing. It's bloody adorable. And then we have five neatly packed little boxes with all the components you need to make the robot. I do love it when these kits are just so simply laid out. Just makes things so much easier for my silly monkey brain. So just like other STEM robot kits, this thing doesn't come with physical instructions. You're going to need to download the app, which is what I have right here. So Roboblock make a few different robots, including the Q Scout, the Q Dino, and the Q Elephant but we've just got regular old Coopers so we're just going to click on that and then you have all six robots that you can make along with their instructions and a short little intro. So for example if we wanted to make the dozer you can click on intro and then you get a star rating as to how difficult this thing would be to build as well as a short little bio and approximately how long it would take to make. But if you ask me the dozer is child's play and I'm an adult so I'm going to go for the more complicated robot design for children. So I'm going to go for the cavalier the one with arms which is a four star difficulty and will approximately take 70 minutes to make. Which really isn't so bad when you compare it to the last robot we made. 20 past 1 in the AM. I started filming around 4 p.m. Oh, God. The instructions are very simply laid out. If you have experience with Lego, chances are you'll be able to build this thing with no problem. So going over some of the main features of this kit, you've got a ultrasonic proximity sensor. You've also got a LED screen, two servo motors, as well as your tools. You've got your screws, as well as your cables. And then you've got the main board of the robot, which is called the Q-Mind Plus, and it's a Arduino-based microcontroller. The app said it should take about 70 minutes to make, and as this thing is designed for children, I think I should be able to pull this off in no time. Yeah. This is fiddly. The nuts that you're meant to use for these wheels are impossible to tighten. I thought I'd messed up because I kind of missed a piece on one of the wheels, but that has literally done nothing. I mean, why would it? That missing part really did nothing to affect the nut. <laughs> affect the nut. Finally, one wheel. That definitely shouldn't have taken that long. Jesus. Oh my God. Oh, that's, that's in the right place, isn't it? Why is that? What's this? Finally it is finished and it only took me an hour and 50 minutes, which is a fair bit longer than 70 minutes. And the sad thing is most of that time was probably spent on that one nut, which is a tad embarrassing. Despite some of the parts on this robot being quite fiddly, overall this was a very easy build. There wasn't any complex wiring or anything like that, it was just as simple as building the frame and then plugging in a few cables to the main board. And that's literally it. And design wise I'm really liking this robot, I like the colour scheme, I like the metal build, it feels really sturdy, the materials feel great. All the parts feel very secure so it's unlikely that any bit of this robot is going to come loose. So yeah, from a build and design point of view it's all thumbs up from me. So as well as being the place where you get the build instructions, the app is also used to control the robot remotely. You can set the robot to avoid obstacles and you can also use it to customize the LED screen with different expressions and animations. You can also program it using the scratch interface which is built into the app. And unlike similar robot kits you can also program it using Python if you download Roboblox PC or Mac software and you can even use C++ if you download the Arduino software. So already from a software point of view this is one of the more versatile robot kits we've tried on the channel. But as I said my coding knowledge is very very minimal. So today I'm just going to stick with a remote control and maybe a bit of scratch. Maybe I'll try that dot matrix, see what that's all about. Hey, that's a face and I just realized I've left the film on. I'm literally suffocating the guy. 
Look at this guy. That is such a cute little robot. Straight out of the app, you've got a few preset animations. You've got happy face, you've got heart face, you've got laughing face, crying. There's one with a big mouth, and then there's just a big old heart. Fairly standard emotes, but if we just erase this heart right here, add a few extra dots to the mouth there, and there we go. That's one moody robot. I relate to this guy. Now for the moment of truth, how does this thing drive? Oh. Oh, oh no, okay. I feel like something might have gone wrong. Hey, oh sh <laughs> uh, Yeah, what's the batteries that are an issue? And this thing loves to bomb it, jeez. Nice, nice. Actually, the movement on this thing is actually really good. Going forwards and, bloody hell, stops going so fast. Forward slowly, slow, slowly. Slowly is apparently not in this robot's repertoire. I appreciate this thing can kind of drift, but it uh, sure is making a mess of this table. Now, I really wanna see how well this robot avoids obstacles, but to use that function, you need to use the ultrasonic sensor, which according to the instructions is not used in this build. And I've had a look around the robot, but there's really no place to attach this on the front, which is where you need the sensor to be. So once again, it's gonna be another boss job. Do I have cable ties? I must have cable ties. All right, I don't have any cable ties, but I have poor man's cable ties. Moody robot surgery, moody robot surgery, yeah. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a boss job sensor attachment. I know, I wish I did better too. You know what, I just realized there's a better way of mounting the sensor. There we go, that's way better. I didn't realize there was a pointless panel on the back which I could have been using, but now I know and it looks way better. So I've just put together a very simple piece of code which basically makes the robot go forwards and then it will stop once it gets about 30 centimeters away from an object, in theory. Hopefully it doesn't just go straight off the table. Oh, 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 oh. Well, it stopped, but uh, a lot closer than 30 centimeters. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm putting a lot of trust in you, robot. Don't run over my face. Oh God, this is daunting. This is, oh, oh. Yeah, that didn't work. So yeah, it's safe to say the sensor has a, a little bit more to be desired. I don't know if it's my really basic code or whether or not the sensor's just not great. Either way, don't put your face in front of the robot. Someone might get hurt. I've just realized I've lost his moody face again. What's the point of having a robot if it's not moody? But this robot also has a built-in speaker and you can either use some of the preset sounds when you're doing the coding or you can use it to play music with this really basic keyboard. Yeah, it's, it's not very good. Though this kit only comes with the one sensor, you can actually buy more sensors and controllers online to expand the robot's capabilities, such as light and sound sensors, temperature and humidity sensors, gyroscope sensors, and loads more. And there's a total of eight ports on the main board, so you can actually use multiple sensors at the same time. So overall, I quite like Cooper's the design is fantastic, the build quality is great, and despite the box saying that it's a six-in-one kit, there's actually a world of possibility to be had with this robot. You don't have to follow one of the six, pre-made designs you can go ahead and just make whatever you want with the parts that it comes with and if you buy any of the extra sensors or controllers online you can actually make this thing do a lot more and also just look at that little face isn't he adorable moody little sod and now we have two robots in our possession i'm very close to having enough robots to have the robot fighting tournament i've always wanted there will be bloodshed or oil shed or electricity sparks i don't know it'll be fun and with that i think that's going to be it for another edition of looted shout out to keegan mcadams natasha savage pika foop and luna on patreon thank you very much for your support and if you like this video hit like if you like all our videos hit subscribe we've got more videos on the way you can also follow us on our social pages and you can also join us on our discord server if you want to support the channel further check out the link in the description to our patreon page and we'll see you guys in the next one have a good one